G'day my friends, Marty Weir here from Marty's Garden. Now I've got an awesome video for you today about the maize worm farm. It's a long term review. I've had some of these for years now and I really quite like the worm farm. Had some up and down experiences with it. There's some pros and cons. Going to share that all in this video. Plus some extra stuff for you guys that love worm farming. If you're considering buying one of these, this may help you with the decision of your purchase. Or if you've got one, you just started using it and you want to learn more about your maize worm farm. So I've had a couple of maize worm farms for quite a few years now, and they were given to me by maize, so thank you very much for that maize, but I've never been paid or told what to say. Everything here is my own honest opinion. And as I said at the beginning of the video, there are some pros and cons to this. Now, I'm gonna share exactly how I feel about these worm farms and who I think they're best for and who not for. Also, if you want to learn how to set one of these up, I just did a recent video of a full build of a maize worm farm, so you can actually connect up here. I'll put a whichever side it is, a card up there, and also at the end of the video, there'll be another like a display video that sort of shows up on your TV or wherever it is on your phone, and you can click on that and uh, go and watch the build of a full maize worm farm. Now, let's get stuck into talking about these guys because. I, like, I quite like them, and they're exactly the same worm farm, they're just at different stages. So if you can hear all those birds screeching in the background, they're the rainbow lorikeets, they love it in the morning, getting into the flowers on the trees, the morning dew and stuff. What I'm going to do though, is I'm going to remove one of these farms, we're going to look at the most established one first, and sort of move on to the second one, and discuss more about this farm. So. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So the farm comes in three sections. The bottom part is sort of the tank where the water collects down below. Then you have two tiered trays and a lid. It also comes with a little collection tray that goes underneath to collect any of the liquids that go through. It comes with a nice lid. It's very well built. It's really strong. Um, probably the only sort of con I find that with it unless it's heavy sort of thing they don't lock in real good so that sort of tray there is down below it's gone out from the sump area down below which is the tank area now the camera may wobble a bit because i've got it set up on the top of the thing there so excuse that if that happens and you can see here here's like a top tray sort of there and each part has grids down below where the worms can move uh, up and down and they're good size holes, so the farm performs really well in that way. And it's pretty tight fit. Look, you always get worms escape, no matter what worm farm you have. But overall, uh, it's quite well built. So this farm has predominantly been designed to be small for apartment dwellers, people living in the city, you know, maybe people living sort of on their own or their first worm farm that they want to try out. One thing I like about these type of farms is they don't get super heavy and it is made from a very good quality plastic that looks like it would handle the sun. Well, I've had mine out in the sun and the weather as well and it's dirty, but it's still holding up really great. It's holding its shape. It hasn't gone out of shape too much, which I really like. So what we'll do first is we'll pull this one out and we'll have a look at the bottom tray and we'll work our way up through this farm. Now this is a farm in full use and a fully established worm farm. So that you might see some worms and things uh, sort of cruising around. So underneath here you can see these are worm castings that have gone down below. And there is like this catchment tray with holes in it and then another small tray that slides in underneath. Um, I'll talk about that other small tray that slides in underneath in a little while, but you can see in there, if it's coming up on the camera, 
castings that are sort of attached down below. You could come out and grab those and use them in the garden straight away because they just fall through. You'll see the odd worm in here. Now there's these sort of like grids where they push them together um, to make the mold. And occasionally you'll see um, some worms and things sort of cruising around in those. And I don't know if they can get out of that water when they get stuck in there. I'm pretty sure they can. So I don't think that would be too much of an issue. So I'll just pour this water out onto the plants because that's some uh, good worm juice there. And you can see there's some nice little strong legs underneath. Now they do come, um, I'm pretty sure the farms still come with some timber legs where you get options so you can raise them up higher, uh, which I think is a good idea. Uh, but not, you know, something that you don't really need, to be honest. And it's quite well uh, constructed. So you can slide that tray straight out from there and get to that and grab your castings, which is not a bad little idea. Let's move to the second tier. Okay, the second tier, you can see some worms cruising around in there, guys, and that is all full of worm castings. That is a great material. You can even see a little worm cocoon there, maybe, coming up on the camera. And you can tell when it's ready to go, it gets like a, uh, it's almost like a putty sort of material. No smell, feels beautiful in your hands. And yeah, it's, it's great stuff. And the worms do go down in it and you collect from that area before you start your next tray. So when that's full of castings, you put your next tray on top and start building on. But I have courses about how to do that in my Worm Wranglers members area, which will be in the link down below. Now this guy here, this big worm here, that's what we like to call a night crawler. They have a long wispy tail and they generally like a bigger worm farm, but he seems to be fairly happy in there. He just won't grow huge, as big as they normally do. He may get released into another farm. Now let's have a look at the top tray that connects to this part. I do have to have, have to make a harvest from this in the next few weeks. So if you're following the channel, uh, I'll be doing that in the members area in the level three worm wranglers to do, uh, yeah, a casting harvest. Okay, the top tray, it's fairly heavy, like, man, compost and worm casting actually weighs quite a lot because it holds around about 70, 80% moisture. And as you know, water's quite heavy. If you look underneath, you can see, hopefully that's coming up on the video again, you can see more castings on the bottom and the grid holes. These grid holes help the worms pass up and down through the two layers and, uh, my worm farm's nearly falling apart here as I do that. It's a bit tricky. Let's have a look in the top part and show you what's going on in there. And we'll talk more about this farm. Okay, so as we lift it off here, you can see that all this stuff pushed forward because I was spinning it on its side and I don't think they would have liked that very much. So I've got a whole lot of sort of like carbon in the top here and some food in the top here feeding these guys. And this is still, the food still getting ready. It's still sort of forming its uh, onto the bacteria. It's just a bit of breakfast cereal there and uh, some fruit, like some banana peels and, and things like that. So as I said, um, you can watch a full build on this type of worm farm, exactly how I do it uh, in that video, in that card uh, up above. So this is not really to look into the worm farm so much it's more to actually experience and show you about the farm. Now it does have some handles on the side, which is really, really handy. I find it makes it easier to lift them up. Some of them don't have handles and you've got to lift them up from the bottom to the top and sides and sort of get all dirty and things like that. Now the lid, this is really important with the lid. I find that sometimes these worm farms, the lids don't fit very well. And this has been designed to have a really good fit you can see here the way that they've designed the mold. It's, it's really good. And probably if I was to make it a little bit better, I would have put some holes like there, 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 and there, like a grid section. So if you're watching this maze, you're gonna do a 2.0 version of this. I'm gonna share some things that I think should be done to this farm. So 
uh, four at least four holes four sets of holes there to let the air go through to help the worms have more oxygen help the microbes and the good bacteria have more oxygen and that would be a good improvement on that farm and you you don't lose many worms coming out and the, the benefits are just far outweigh um, any losses so do you have a maize worm farm? Are you using one? Would you like to share your experience with us in the comments box down below? I'm sure there would be others to love to hear from you what you think about it and your experiences. And I would too. And if you've got any questions, leave them down there in the comments area and I'll be happy to answer them for you. So this is the farm that I keep mentioning that I just set up with Coco Pete. Just got one tray happening at the moment with 500 worms in it. I just want to show you what the inside tray looks like so you can see it's really well built it's quite strong and that allows good airflow and allows the worms to migrate up and down which you'll learn more about in time by uh, watching more of my videos and learning more about worm farming so yeah it's quite well built as you can see So let's talk about the cons of this worm farm. Now, what I find is some of the edges around here, they don't always fit together, so that leaves an opening for worms to escape. It's also a small worm farm, so unless it's kept indoors or in a space where it doesn't get too cold, the thermal mass will warm up and cool down much quicker, which will stress the worms out a little bit. So you need to keep it in a place where there isn't too much temperature fluctuation, like under the sink, uh, in the laundry, uh, on the veranda, out of sort of like the hot sun, uh, cool breezes, uh, things like that. Now, there is a collection tray that goes down below, a little plastic tray, and it comes out of a hole down below, and I've lost that tray, because it doesn't just slide in and fit in and slot in somewhere. So unfortunately, I just use whatever I have lying around that slides underneath, and that still seems to work. So that's not really much of a problem for me. Um, who's this worm farm for? Well, it's for those who just want to have maybe their first worm farm, a kid's worm farm, or someone that's got a small space and not going through a lot of scraps. If you're going through a lot of scraps, you may want to consider a bigger worm farm than this. But overall, it's pretty well built get many years out of it and I think you're going to have a series of worm farms like I do it's a good one to have in your collection all right if you're enjoying the show make sure you watch more videos before you go got one up above the full worm farm build of this as I mentioned many times hundreds of videos on here about worm farming on Marty's garden would I recommend this yep yeah, I would I've still got mine haven't sold it hanging on to them producing more videos in here in my well it's a tent shelter logic greenhouse where I'm building out the wormery and sharing more worm farming videos for you so if you're into that type of thing stay subbed or sub and we'll see you at the next video real soon bye for now